Babur Persian Bab translate Babur lit Tiger the 14th of February 1483 to the 26th of December 1530 born Zahir ud Din Muhammad was the ultimate founder and first emperor of the Mughal dynasty in the Indian subcontinent he was a direct descendant of Emperor Timur Tamerlane from what is now Uzbekistan. Babur was born in Andijan, in the Fergana Valley, in modern Uzbekistan. Babur ruled nearby Ash in Fergana Valley, located in modern Kyrgyzstan, pondered his future on Suleiman Mountain and even constructed a mosque atop of the mountain. Babur somehow concludes that the confines of the Fergana would cramp his aspirations as a descendant of famous conquering warrior princes. He wrote of the city. There are many sayings about the excellence of Ash. On the southeastern side of the Ash fortress is a well-proportioned mountain called Bara Ko, where, on its summit, Sultan Mahmud Khan built a pavilion. Farther down, on a spur of the same mountain, I had a porticoed pavilion built in 902 1496-7. Babur was the eldest son of Umar Sheikh Mirza, governor of Fergana and great-grandson of Timur the Great. He ascended the throne of Fergana in its capital Akshikant in 1494 at the age of 12 and faced rebellion. He conquered Samarkand two years later, only to lose the vilayet of Fergana soon after. In his attempt to reconquer Fergana, he lost control of Samarkand. In 1501, his attempt to recapture both vilayets went in vain as he was defeated by Muhammad Shaybani Khan. In 1504, he conquered Kabul, which was under the rule of the infant heir of Ula Beg. Babur formed a partnership with Safavid ruler Ismail I and reconquered parts of Turkestan, including Samarkand, only to again lose it and the other newly conquered lands to the Shaybanids. After losing Samarkand for the third time, Babur turned his attention to south. At that time, the Indo-Gangetic plain of the northern Indian subcontinent was ruled by Ibrahim Lodi of the Afghan Lodi dynasty, whereas Rajputana was ruled by a Hindu Rajput confederacy, led by Rana Sangha of Mewar. According to historical records and Babarnama Babur's autobiography, Daulat Khan Lodi invited him to attack Delhi where Ibrahim Lodi was ruling at that time. He sent his ambassador to him to support him in his attack on Delhi. Babur defeated Ibrahim Lodi at the First Battle of Panipat in 1526 CE and founded the Mughal Empire. However, he again faced opposition, this time from Rana Sangha of Mewar and Madini Rai, another Rajput ruler in the Battle of Chanderi who considered Babur a foreigner. The Rana was defeated in the Battle of Kanwa. Babur married several times. Notable among his sons are Humayun, Cameron Mirza and Hindal Mirza. Babur died in 1530 and was succeeded by Humayun. According to Babur's wishes, he was buried in bagh e babur in Kabul, Afghanistan. Being a patrilineal descendant of Timur, Babur considered himself a Timurid and Chagatai Turkic. He is considered a national hero in Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan. Many of his poems also have become popular folk songs. He wrote Babarnama in Chagatai Turkic and this was translated into Persian during Akbar's reign. Name Zahir ud Din is Arabic for defender of the faith of Islam, and Muhammad honors the Islamic prophet. The difficulty of pronouncing the name for his Central Asian Turko Mongol army may have been responsible for the greater popularity of his nickname Babur, also variously spelled Babur, Babar, and Babur. The name is generally taken in reference to the Persian Babr, meaning tiger. The word repeatedly appears in Ferdowsi's Shahnameh and was borrowed into the Turkic languages of Central Asia. Thaxton argues for an alternate derivation from the Pi word, beaver, pointing to similarities between the pronunciation Babur and the Russian Bobr, beaver. Babur bore the royal titles Badshah and al Sultanu, el Azam wa el Hakan al Mukarram Padshah e Ghazi. He and later Mughal emperors used the title of Mirza and Gurkhan as regalia. Background Babur's memoirs form the main source for details of his life. They are known as the Babarnama and were written in Chagatai Turkic, his mother tongue, though, according to Dale, his Turkic prose is highly Persianized in its sentence structure, morphology or word formation and vocabulary. 
Babarnama was translated into Persian during the rule of Babur's grandson Akbar. Babur was born on the 14th of February 1483 in the city of Andijan, Andijan Province, Fergana Valley, contemporary Uzbekistan. He was the eldest son of Umar Sheikh Mirza, ruler of the Fergana Valley, the son of Abu Sa'id Mirza and grandson of Miran Shah, who was himself son of Timur and his wife Kutla Nigar Khanum, daughter of Yunus Khan, the ruler of Mogulistan and great-great-grandson of Tula Timur, the son of Asin Buka'i, who was the great-great-great-grandson of Chagatai Khan, the second-born son of Genghis Khan. Babur hailed from the Barlas tribe, which was of Mongol origin and had embraced Turkic and Persian culture. They had also converted to Islam centuries earlier and resided in Turkestan and Khorasan. Aside from the Chagatai language, Babur was equally fluent in Persian, the lingua franca of the Timurid elite, hence, Babur, though nominally a Mongol or Mughal in Persian language, drew much of his support from the local Turkic and Iranian people of Central Asia, and his army was diverse in its ethnic makeup. It included Persians known to Babur as Serts and Tajiks. Ethnic Afghans, Arabs, as well as Barlas and Chagatayid Turko Mongols from Central Asia. <inaudible> Ruler of Central Asia <inaudible> As ruler of Fergana In 1494, 11 year old Babur became the ruler of Fergana, in present day Uzbekistan, after Umar Sheikh Mirza died, while tending pigeons in an ill constructed dovecote that toppled into the ravine below the palace. During this time, two of his uncles from the neighboring kingdoms, who were hostile to his father, and a group of nobles who wanted his younger brother Jahangir to be the ruler, threatened his succession to the throne. His uncles were relentless in their attempts to dislodge him from this position as well as from many of his other territorial possessions to come. Babur was able to secure his throne mainly because of help from his maternal grandmother, Aisan Daulat Begum, although there was also some luck involved. Most territories around his kingdom were ruled by his relatives, who were descendants of either Timur or Genghis Khan, and were constantly in conflict. At that time, rival princes were fighting over the city of Samarkand to the west, which was ruled by his paternal cousin. Babur had a great ambition to capture the city. In 1497 he besieged Samarkand for seven months before eventually gaining control over it. He was 15 years old and for him the campaign was a huge achievement. Babur was able to hold the city despite desertions in his army, but he later fell seriously ill. Meanwhile, a rebellion back home, approximately 350 kilometers (220 miles) away, amongst nobles who favored his brother, robbed him of Fergana. As he was marching to recover it, he lost Samarkand to a rival prince, leaving him with neither. He had held Samarkand for 100 days, and he considered this defeat as his biggest loss, obsessing over it even later in his life after his conquests in India. In 1501, Babur laid siege to Samarkand once more, but was soon defeated by his most formidable rival, Muhammad Shaybani, Khan of the Uzbeks. Samarkand, his lifelong obsession, was lost again. He tried to reclaim Fergana but lost it too and escaping with a small band of followers, he wandered to the mountains of Central Asia and took refuge with hill tribes. Thus, during the ten years since becoming the ruler of Fergana, Babur suffered many short-lived victories and was without shelter and in exile, aided by friends and peasants. He finally stayed in Tashkent, which was ruled by his maternal uncle. Babur wrote, During my stay in Tashkent, I endured much poverty and humiliation. No country, or hope of one. For three years, Babur concentrated on building up a strong army, recruiting widely amongst the Tajiks of Badakhshan in particular. By 1502, he had resigned all hopes of recovering Fergana, he was left with nothing and was forced to try his luck someplace else. At Kabul Kabul was ruled by Ula Beg Mirza of the Argan dynasty, who died leaving only an infant as heir. The city was then claimed by Mukin Beg, who was considered to be a usurper and was opposed by the local populace. In 1504, Babur was able to cross the snowy Hindu Kush mountains and capture Kabul from the remaining Argunids, who were forced to retreat to Kandahar. With this move, he gained a new kingdom, re-established his fortunes and would remain its ruler until 1526. 
In 1505, because of the low revenue generated by his new mountain kingdom, Babur began his first expedition to India. In his memoirs, he wrote, My desire for Hindustan had been constant. It was in the month of Shaban, the sun being in Aquarius, that we rode out of Kabul for Hindustan. It was a brief raid across the Khyber Pass. In the same year, Babur united with Sultan Husayn Mirza Baykara of Herat, a fellow Timurid and distant relative, against their common enemy, the Uzbek Shabani. However, this venture did not take place because Husayn Mirza died in 1506 and his two sons were reluctant to go to war. Babur instead stayed at Herat after being invited by the two Mirza brothers. It was then the cultural capital of the Eastern Muslim world. Though he was disgusted by the vices and luxuries of the city, he marveled at the intellectual abundance there, which he stated was filled with learned and matched men. He became acquainted with the work of the Chagatai poet Mir Ali Shir Navi, who encouraged the use of Chagatai as a literary language. Navi's proficiency with the language, which he is credited with founding, may have influenced Babur in his decision to use it for his memoirs. He spent two months there before being forced to leave because of diminishing resources. It later was overrun by Shaybani and the Mirzas fled. Babur became the only reigning ruler of the Timurid dynasty after the loss of Herat, and many princes sought refuge from him at Kabul because of Shaybani's invasion in the west. He thus assumed the title of Padshah Emperor among the Timurids. Though this title was insignificant since most of his ancestral lands were taken, Kabul itself was in danger and Shaybani continued to be a threat. Babur prevailed during a potential rebellion in Kabul, but two years later a revolt among some of his leading generals drove him out of Kabul. Escaping with very few companions, Babur soon returned to the city, capturing Kabul again and regaining the allegiance of the rebels. Meanwhile, Shaybani was defeated and killed by Ismail I, Shah of Shia Safavid Persia. In 1510, Babur and the remaining Timurids used this opportunity to reconquer their ancestral territories. Over the following few years, Babur and Shah Ismail formed a partnership in an attempt to take over parts of Central Asia. In return for Ismail's assistance, Babur permitted the Safavids to act as a suzerain over him and his followers. Thus, in 1513, after leaving his brother Nasir Mirza to rule Kabul, he managed to take Samarkand for the third time. He also took Bukhara but lost both again to the Uzbeks. Shah Ismail reunited Babur with his sister Kanzada, who had been imprisoned by and forced to marry the recently deceased Shabani. Babur returned to Kabul after three years in 1514. The following eleven years of his rule mainly involved dealing with relatively insignificant rebellions from Afghan tribes, his nobles and relatives, in addition to conducting raids across the eastern mountains. Babur began to modernize and train his army despite it being, for him, relatively peaceful times. Foreign relations Babur began relations with the Safavids when he met Ali Mirza Safavi at Samarkand. Their good relations lasted even after Babur was approached by the Ottomans. The Safavids' army led by Najm e Sani massacred civilians in Central Asia and then sought the assistance of Babur, who advised the Safavids to withdraw. The Safavids, however, refused and were defeated during the Battle of Gazdawan by the warlord Ubaidullah Khan. Babur's early relations with the Ottomans were poor because the Ottoman Sultan Selim I provided his rival Ubaidullah Khan with powerful matchlocks and cannons. In 1507, when ordered to accept Selim I as his rightful suzerain, Babur refused and gathered Kazilbash servicemen in order to counter the forces of Ubaidullah Khan during the Battle of Gazdawan. In 1513, Selim I reconciled with Babur fearing that he would join the Safavids, dispatched Ostad Ali Khali the artilleryman and Mustafa Rumi the matchlock marksman, and many other Ottoman Turks, in order to assist Babur in his conquests. This particular assistance proved to be the basis of future Mughal-Ottoman relations. From them, he also adopted the tactic of using matchlocks and cannons in field rather than only in sieges, which would give him an important advantage in India. Formation of the Mughal Empire Babur still wanted to escape from the Uzbeks, and he chose India as a refuge instead of Badakhshan, which was to the north of Kabul. He wrote, "...in the presence of such power and potency, we had to think of some place for ourselves and, at this crisis and in the crack of time there was, put a wider space between us and the strong foemen." 
After his third loss of Samarkand, Babur gave full attention to the conquest of North India, launching a campaign. He reached the Chenab River, now in Pakistan, in 1519. Until 1524, his aim was to only expand his rule to Punjab, mainly to fulfill the legacy of his ancestor Timur, since it used to be part of his empire. At the time parts of North India were under the rule of Ibrahim Lodi of the Lodi dynasty, but the empire was crumbling and there were many defectors. He received invitations from Daulat Khan Lodi, governor of Punjab and Allah Ud Din, uncle of Ibrahim. He sent an ambassador to Ibrahim, claiming himself the rightful heir to the throne, but the ambassador was detained at Lahore and released months later. Babur started for Lahore, Punjab, in 1524 but found that Daulat Khan Lodi had been driven out by forces sent by Ibrahim Lodi. When Babur arrived at Lahore, the Lodi army marched out and his army was routed. In response, Babur burned Lahore for two days, then marched to Dipalpur, placing Alam Khan, another rebel uncle of Lodi, as governor. Alam Khan was quickly overthrown and fled to Kabul. In response, Babur supplied Alam Khan with troops who later joined up with Daulat Khan Lodi, and together with about 30,000 troops, they besieged Ibrahim Lodi at Delhi. He easily defeated and drove off Alam's army and Babur realized Lodi would not allow him to occupy the Punjab. First Battle of Panipat In November 1525 Babur got news at Peshawar that Daulat Khan Lodi had switched sides, and he drove out Allah Ud Din. Babur then marched onto Lahore to confront Daulat Khan Lodi, only to see Daulat's army melt away at their approach. Daulat surrendered and was pardoned. Thus within three weeks of crossing the Indus River Babur had become the master of Punjab, Babur marched on to Delhi via Sirhind. He reached Panipat on 20 April 1526 and there met Ibrahim Lodi's numerically superior army of about 100,000 soldiers and 100 elephants. In the battle that began on the following day, Babur used the tactic of Tulugma, encircling Ibrahim Lodi's army and forcing it to face artillery fire directly, as well as frightening its war elephants. Ibrahim Lodi died during the battle, thus ending the Lodi dynasty. Babur wrote in his memoirs about his victory By the grace of the Almighty God, this difficult task was made easy to me, and that mighty army, in the space of a half a day, was laid in dust. After the battle, Babur occupied Delhi and Agra, took the throne of Lodi, and laid the foundation for the eventual rise of Mughal rule in India. However, before he became North India's ruler, he had to fend off challengers, such as Rana Sangha. Topic. Battle of Kanwa The Battle of Kanwa was fought between Babur and the Rajput ruler Rana Sangha on 17 March 1527. Rana Sangha wanted to overthrow Babur, whom he considered to be a foreigner ruling in India, and also to extend the Rajput territories by annexing Delhi and Agra. He was supported by Afghan chiefs who felt Babur had been deceptive by refusing to fulfill promises made to them. Upon receiving news of Rana Sangha's advance towards Agra, Babur took a defensive position at Kanwa currently in the Indian state of Rajasthan, from where he hoped to launch a counterattack later. According to K.V. Krishna Rao, Babur won the battle because of his superior generalship and modern tactics. The battle was one of the first in India that featured cannons. Rao also notes that Rana Sangha faced treachery. When the Hindu chief Silhadi joined Babur's army with a garrison of 6,000 soldiers. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Battle of Chanderi. This battle took place in the aftermath of the Battle of Kanwa. On receiving news that Rana Sangha had made preparations to renew the conflict with him, Babur decided to isolate the Rana by inflicting a military defeat on one of his staunchest allies, Madini Rai Kangar, who was the ruler of Malwa. Upon reaching Chanderi, on January 20, 1528, Babur offered Shamsabad to Madini Rao in exchange for Chanderi as a peace overture, but the offer was rejected. The outer fortress of Chanderi was taken by Babur's army at night, and the next morning the upper fort was captured. Babur himself expressed surprise that the upper fort had fallen within an hour of the final assault. Madini Rai organized a Jauhar ceremony during which women and children within the fortress immolated themselves. 
A small number of soldiers also collected in Medini Rao's house and proceeded to kill each other in collective suicide. This sacrifice does not seem to have impressed Babur who does not express a word of admiration for the enemy in his autobiography. Topic: <laughs> Personal life and relationships. There are no descriptions about Babur's physical appearance, except from the paintings in the translation of the Babarnama prepared during the reign of Akbar. In his autobiography, Babur claimed to be strong and physically fit, and claimed to have swum across every major river he encountered, including twice across the Ganges River in North India. Unlike his father, he had ascetic tendencies and did not have any great interest in women. In his first marriage, he was bashful towards Aisha Sultan Begum, later losing his affection for her. However, he acquired several more wives and concubines over the years, and as required for a prince, he was able to ensure the continuity of his line. Babur's first wife, Aisha Sultan Begum, was his paternal cousin, the daughter of Sultan Ahmad Mirza, his father's brother. She was an infant when betrothed to Babur, who was himself five years old. They married eleven years later, c. 1498-99. The couple had one daughter, Fakur un Nisa, who died within a year in 1500. Three years later, after Babur's first defeat at Fergana, Aisha left him and returned to her father's household. In 1504, Babur married Zainab Sultan Begum, who died childless within two years. In the period 1506-08, Babur married four women, Maham Begum in 1506, Masuma Sultan Begum, Gulrik Begum and Dildar Begum. Babur had four children by Maham Begum, of whom only one survived infancy. This was his eldest son and heir, Humayun. Masuma Sultan Begum died during childbirth, the year of her death is disputed either 1508 or 1519. Gulrik bore Babur two sons, Cameron and Askari, and Dildar Begum was the mother of Babur's youngest son, Hindal. Babur later married Mubaraka Yusufzai, a Pashtun woman of the Yusufzai tribe. Gulnar Agacha and Nargul Agacha were two Circassian slaves given to Babur as gifts by Tamasp Shah Safavi, the Shah of Persia. They became recognized ladies of the royal household. During his rule in Kabul, when there was a time of relative peace, Babur pursued his interests in literature, art, music, and gardening. Previously, he never drank alcohol and avoided it when he was in Herat. In Kabul, he first tasted it at the age of 30. He then began to drink regularly, host wine parties and consume preparations made from opium. Though religion had a central place in his life, Babur also approvingly quoted a line of poetry by one of his contemporaries, I am drunk, officer. Punish me when I am sober. He quit drinking for health reasons before the Battle of Kanwa, just two years before his death, and demanded that his court do the same. But he did not stop chewing narcotic preparations, and did not lose his sense of irony. He wrote, everyone regrets drinking and swears an oath of abstinence, I swore the oath and regret that. <laughs> <laughs> Death and legacy Babur died at the age of 47 on 5 January OS the 26th of December 1530, 1531 and was succeeded by his eldest son, Humayun. After death, his body was moved to Kabul, where it lies in Bagh-e Babur. It is generally agreed that, as a Timurid, Babur was not only significantly influenced by the Persian culture, but also that his empire gave rise to the expansion of the Persianate ethos in the Indian subcontinent. For example, F. Lehman states in the Encyclopedia Iranica. His origin, milieu, training, and culture were steeped in Persian culture, and so Babur was largely responsible for the fostering of this culture by his descendants, the Mughals of India, and for the expansion of Persian cultural influence in the Indian subcontinent, with brilliant literary, artistic, and historiographical results. Although all applications of modern Central Asian ethnicities to people of Babur's time are anachronistic, Soviet and Uzbek sources regard Babur as an ethnic Uzbek. At the same time, during the Soviet Union Uzbek scholars were censored for idealizing and praising Babur and other historical figures such as Ali Shir Navi. Babur is considered a national hero in Uzbekistan. On 14 February 2008, stamps in his name were issued in the country to commemorate his 525th birth anniversary. Many of Babur's poems have become popular Uzbek folk songs, especially by Shirali Joraev. Some sources claim that Babur is a national hero in Kyrgyzstan too. 
In October 2005, Pakistan developed the Babur cruise missile, named in his honor. One of the enduring features of Babur's life was that he left behind the lively and well-written autobiography known as Babranama. Quoting Henry Beveridge, Stanley Lane Poole writes, his autobiography is one of those priceless records which are for all time, and is fit to rank with the confessions of St. Augustine and Rousseau, and the memoirs of Gibbon and Newton. In Asia it stands almost alone. In his own words, The cream of my testimony is this, do nothing against your brothers even though they may deserve it. Also, the new year, the spring, the wine and the beloved are joyful. Babur make merry, for the world will not be there for you a second time. Topic. Babri Masjid Babri Masjid Babur's Mosque, in Ayodhya, is said to have been constructed on the orders of Mir Baki, one of the commanders of his army. In 2003, by the order of an Indian court, the Archaeological Survey of India was asked to conduct a more in-depth study and an excavation to ascertain the type of structure that was beneath the mosque. The excavation was conducted from 12 March 2003 to 7 August 2003, resulting in 1360 discoveries. The ASI submitted its report to the Allahabad High Court. The summary of the ASI report indicated the presence of a 10th century temple under the mosque. The ASI team said that human activity at the site dates back to the 13th century BCE. The next few layers date back to the Shunga period, 2nd 1st century BCE, and the Kushan period. During the early medieval period 11 to 12 th century CE, a huge but short-lived structure of nearly 50 meters north-south orientation was constructed. On the remains of this structure, another massive structure was constructed. This structure had at least three structural phases and three successive floors attached with it. The report concluded that it was over the top of this construction that the disputed structure was constructed during the early 16th century. Ancestry <laughs> 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 Notes <laughs>